Hello and welcome today to a wonderful conversation from the heart that we are going to be having. My name is Bonnie Kiseno and I am so fortunate to be blessed with the presence of this Aphrodite goddess, Danielle Shrek, today. And welcome, Danielle. I'm so happy to have you with us. So I'm going to just give a little bit of background about Danielle. Danielle is um, a rich tapestry of lots of wonderful things. Um, she's from originally from California. Um, and in my mind, she is just like a spring flower. As you can see, she just is fresh and chipper and beautiful all the time. Or at least she seems that way to me. Um, but Danielle is so much more than just her outer beauty. She has so much depth. She's working on this collaborative book called Stories of the Goddess, Divine Keeper. Blip, blip, blip. Let me try that again. Divine Feminine Frequency Keepers. It's such a tongue twister for me. Sorry, Danielle. So it's Stories of the Goddess, Divine Feminine Frequency Keepers. Wow, what a powerful name that is, right? And in addition to that, Danielle does several different healing modalities and they're just, it's amazing. Um, and she's getting ready to begin studying a new modality. She's obviously constantly in flux and growing and expanding herself, which is just wonderful. We'd love to support that. And so Danielle, welcome and thank you so much for coming today. Wow, thank you, Bonnie. That was such a beautiful introduction. I feel so honored to be here with you. And yeah, let's let's get to it. I'm really excited to be here. I I am excited too. It's just such a such a fun time because um correct me if I'm wrong, I do believe the pre-release of this book, Stories of the Goddess, is coming up March 23rd, correct? Mm -hmm. As far as I know, we're still on uh, schedule for March 23rd and uh, Kindle version, and then we'll have the paperback release at another date. Um, however, yeah, you'll have access to all the information. Well, I sincerely can't wait for the release myself because I haven't been able to read everybody's chapters and I can't wait to read them. Yours in particular, I really want to read. And so on that note, could you just give us a little bit of um, a little bit of an idea. What is the theme of your chapter? Like, and, and maybe how you came to write about that? Like what led you to that? Yeah, thank you for asking. That's such a powerful question in my opinion, because uh, not just myself, but many of the women that have been working uh, with Rada Publishing and in this book particularly, um, have been cultivating their sense of empowerment. And of course, that's what Rada Publishing House stands for. They're here for the visionaries, the, you know, the truth tellers and all that. So a lot of us have such a dynamic background and the way we were raised from how we've grown into who we are today. So for me, it's been a work in progress. And like many people that work with the goddess archetypes, it kind of comes in different parts, you know, of your life where you might work with, for example, you mentioned Aphrodite, who I'm really close to and um and then there's others who come in to teach you certain elements and aspects of your essence and who you are and empower and grow you um and this one was a little different and unique as far as who came forward and i was very um uh, much a, in a place in my life and currently in tran like a transitional phase and a lot of growth a lot of movement and it requires a certain level of fortitude that creates um, what I would call like the warrior goddess and someone who is in the strong world leadership. And that's a lot of us in this book. So I really mostly touch on, you know, the, the frequency of being in your empowerment as a leader and how it's important to humanity, not just yourself. Wow. That's beautiful. Really beautiful. And so you mentioned, you know, the goddess archetypes and I'm wondering from your perspective, how do you see I mean, we have so many archetypes, both gods and goddesses, but how do you see from your perspective, the goddess archetypes that have been around for millennia, like how do you see them playing a role in current society? Because I know sometimes people sort of discount like historical figures and historical ways and, you know, things of the past and how, 
you know, sometimes things from the past are just outdated and, you know, not really applicable to the times. So how do you see the goddess archetypes being very applicable right now? I see it as an energy. It's a frequency. So just like anything, everything's constantly moving and changing and the world is evolving, but through the actions and thoughts and intentions of humanity. And when you're in a place of growth, you're going through a, a lot of emotion. You know, you're, you're physically, mentally, emotionally being pushed to your limits. And so in a lot of ways, it's very metaphorical and it's symbolic. And I see it happening on a global global scale um, with just the shifting in society, whether it could be our monetary system or it could even be the weather patterns that we're having down to how do we treat, you know, um, second, third, first class people, you know, this type of thing. So there's a shift in how the world is changing. And I do see that. Um, especially if all you have to do is turn on, you know, your nightly news, which I highly recommend you don't turn that off, you know, so it's a frequency, you know, so um, the more we can become more centered, which or I do feel like I have to work on it all the time. I'm not perfect. It's definitely could be in a burst of emotions. You know, we talk about the Kali, we're at, you know, the air, the end of the era of Kali Luga. So these are all very important times and it's, it's transitional is what I feel. And so I don't know if you particularly have a lot of experience with like teenage girls, but you, you were one at one time. Um, and so from that point of view, how would you sort of imagine that stories of goddesses, stories of the goddess and stories of goddesses might help? Because I just sort of imagine like to be a teenage girl right now must be um pretty huge and pretty overwhelming. And how would you sort of imagine that maybe these stories and goddess archetypes might help um, young, young girls becoming women? That's such a beautiful question. I love that you asked that. Well, the way I feel about it is we are like in a way sharing a piece of ourselves as the human aspect and our empowered self. And through the energy and the frequency of however the chapter is written, I feel that the younger generation could see it as a way of realizing, oh, wow, I'm not alone. Okay, these feelings and thoughts that, that I'm having are normal and it's okay. And, you know, you could look at it as a way of helping to kind of guide yourself. You know, it's it's it depends on who you see it. It's all perspective. So take the best of each chapter and just use it as a way to elevate yourself. You know, um, I didn't, in this particular chapter, I didn't make it really about me directly as Danielle. I mean, I, it was more of a message. It's something that just came through. It's simple, sweet, and to the point. Um, and it's, for me, it was mostly about wanting to empower, empower myself and empower others and empower the divine feminine but also the divine masculine because it's it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship so we're not just all only feminine we have the masculine we have the god and the goddess so yeah take what take what you resonate with at that current moment and who knows pick it up three years down the road when you're a little older and you'll get a little something different from your exactly. perspective I, that that makes so much sense i mean you can read any book today and then read it when you're a little older and in a different um, season yeah. of your life and it's a whole different thing. I always remember my mom, she read the Bible like 10 times and she said that from when she read it first as a girl and then each time she read it, she was like, I can't believe it's like, it's like reading a whole different book. So mm -hmm. I yeah. think, you know, not to necessarily compare this book to the Bible, but I think that, um, that sort of idea that, you know, reading something again and again and again can certainly fuel us in different ways each each time we read it, depending on where we are standing, you know, in our shoes at that moment. So thank you for pointing that out. And I want to go back um, because you you were talking about this book and or, or your chapter rather, and how you didn't necessarily make it about you, but it sounded to me like, and correct me if I was wrong, if I'm wrong. But it sounded to me as if writing this chapter actually grew you as a person and, and particularly in the spiritual aspect. Would that be true? And if so, can you expound on that a little bit? 
Wow, you're such a great listener. <laughs> that was a beautiful question. Um, yes, it definitely grew me. It helped me to recognize that part of myself that wanted to step more into the role of leadership and being empowered in my sacred space um, and others too, empowering others. So, um, sorry, what was the second half of the question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I just bumped this no um it was you know did it did it grow you spiritually and and as a person and and how so yeah you yes it did and also to uh, allowed me to uh recognize that um what I perceive as challenges are just opportunities for growth and expansion in my awareness and knowledge in helping others and it's slightly painful from time to time because it can make you again, and this isn't the message, but it's relatable because you could feel like you're alone sometimes in the process, but you're really not. And um, yeah, it kind of gave me, I guess you would say the courage to go after more of the things that were important to me and having um, the courage to step into that. And I'm still kind of working through that right now. It's um, if there's a lot going on. So it's been very, um, rewarding just the process of writing and going through the program and it definitely helped me to overcome the overthinking too as well because I just went all in I did it boom 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 and that's a good feeling <laughs> that is a good feeling that's pretty awesome and so you I want to go back again to something else that you said earlier it sounded to me as if this this chapter um was I think you said I think the word you used was message um, it, it sounds almost like it just sort of channeled through you this message. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me more about that? Because that's very fascinating to me. Yeah, it felt, um, like I said, in a way, it felt like a very simple message for me personally, because I was like, oh, that's okay. And so as I was writing, it was just coming out. And it's maybe a combo, com, combination. I would, what's that word, where you combine things over a period of time, which is aspects of who I've been for a couple of years. It's just more like pulling that information in and kind of bridging it all together so I can just say what needs to be said. Because I do feel that the message itself is more about a global bigger picture than it is just like a small, smaller aspect. I do feel this could be applicable for a lot of people and just an encourage mess a encouraging message you know that type of thing and why it's so important now more than ever to step into your empowerment your embodiment of the energies that are coming to you through the goddess god archetypes and so why do you think it's so important that we step into our empowerment now oh gosh because we've been oh. so enslaved as a society and humanity for so long and I do feel the veils are, you know, lifting. I do believe in the theory of like our consciousness is expanding and we're evolving as a, you know, in humanity as a society. And so there are, you know, bigger and brighter things coming, not to say that now's not good, but um, there's a lot of suffering and there's a lot of pain and people who are really going through it. And one of the best ways to get through it is to take, you know, ownership of you and your feelings and your emotions and what you're battling and taking action and just stepping forward into that like empowered sense of self because it can be very disempowering when you are you know being told what to do when to do how to do it, and why you should think this way and you know there's there's a level of you know patience that is required because you you have to you know take in information but there comes a point where you're like okay this information does not feel good let's go here this information feels better let me learn from this person. And then you cultivate the training that, you know, you, you build trust with yourself, with others, and you're learning, you're growing, and then you shift and pivot accordingly to what's, you know, your vision's going to get only bigger and bigger. So it's more about empowering that you are making the right choices. You are on the right path and you are divinely guided. And the old system is not very much in that sense of empowerment because it almost wants you to be a robot and be told what to do and to do, you know, that's, that's pretty much what I'm, yeah. So, um, oh gosh, that's juicy. So <laughs> I just want to like lean in close to you. Um, oh, I need some more. <laughs> so I want to ask you something. 
Um, because this is sort of a perception that I have, and I, I do know some other people who feel this way. So you were talking about the shift of humanity that we mm -hmm. as a human race are shifting. And I, I sort of view that like as a consciousness shift. And I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what you mean as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the other aspect to that, if you, I, I feel it, um, and, and I know other people who do, but I want to know your thoughts on this. So besides shifting as a human collective, um, the consciousness level trying to rise up right now, what do you think about the planet herself, like Earth, mm -hmm. like Mother Earth, like as a living entity, mm -hmm. also it may be shifting the consciousness, trying to shift the consciousness up mm -hmm. oh yeah um yeah she's very much alive and her we are the children on we are we are if anything we we are blessed to be able to even remain on her planet because in a way there's a lot of things that are, that are obviously happening um that are very difficult to explain why but at the end of the day it is I always see it as a purge when, you know, extreme things happen and we could be anything from volcanoes to earthquakes to destruction. There's been so much, you know, timelines of wars that have occurred on planet earth. And you have to think of how much pain and suffering, you know, mother guy feels and it's all connected. I mean, from the trees to the animals, to the air that we, you know, breathe and it's all kind of flowing. And we're, we're very lucky to be on this habitat. However, also too, we play just as much as a role, like our feel, like what, what we have intentionally inside of us, you know, what kind of energy are you putting out into the world and how are you treating the planet? How are you treating yourself? It always comes back to self because ultimately when you treat yourself well, love yourself well, you're going to treat everything around you with respect and sovereignty and say, oh my gosh, this is, thank you for, you know, thank you air for letting me, you know, survive another day. Thank you, beautiful sky for giving me dopamine and making, helping me feel good. You know, there's so many things to be thankful for. And so, you know, what, what side of the spectrum do you want to lean towards? And so that's the shift I feel too, that I, I feel like we're on the same page and maybe words are just expressed differently through different people because we have our own unique expression through perspective um but yeah it is it is a frequency because i do feel that our planet does hold space, so much space that it would even protect you you could be in the center of a, a storm i mean you could be in the middle of a hurricane but maybe be in the center because you're divinely protected and needed here at this time i believe so much in that and i'm not saying you know i don't I personally would never want to be in that situation, but if <laughs> someone hit the fan, you know, I trust that, okay, there's a reason, there's a reason we're here, <laughs> but we're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. <laughs> so on that, on that note, um, I, I'm thinking as I'm listening to you and, and thinking about the planet and, and the shifting and how we are a part of all that and how, like you said, we, what thoughts we're putting out, what actions we're putting out, like affects everything and it affects all of that and and so my my mind went immediately to sort of the eastern um the eastern medicine mm -hmm. way of thinking where you know you have these five elements that all exist on the planet mm -hmm. and fire earth metal water wood or you know whatever the um the indian one that's just not coming to my brain right now but it's the same thing anyway um and that we are made up of all of those aspects. And, and I know for our, the Western mind, that's a little bit tricky to understand, but mm -hmm. skipping the understanding it, let's just jump to, let's take that as an example. If we are made up of all those same five elements, just as the planet we are living within, um, and I, I kind of think of it as we live in it rather than on it, um, yeah, I did say on, didn't I? No, I, you know what? I agree with you on that. And so sometimes even my own words, I have to correct. That's okay. I say it too sometimes because we're accustomed to that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Just like you and I have like a, an, an aura or we have a, you know, however you want to look at it, there is something around us that isn't visible. I think the earth does too. So that's why I kind of see it like we live in the earth, not exactly on the earth. Um, right. But 
<laughs> of course, if you know, if that five element concept exists and and it does exist, um how could we not be so so synergistically um connected with this planet that as we shift, the earth shifts, as the earth shifts, we shift, like it, it just yeah, does that Obviously, I think it resonates with you, but do you want to say anything further on that? Yeah, I do feel that we all have that. Well, we all have an energy field. <laughs> it's an electromagnetic frequency. So um, we do vibrate and we do have like, sometimes our auras can be felt from a distance too. Like a lot of people, um, that's in my opinion, how we're able to have telepathic com connection because it's you're picking up on it. everything is frequency. We're energy and motion, you know, and that's why even being stagnant and not getting around and moving around is so bad for your mental and emotional because everything's connected, mental, emotional, physical. And so they'll say things like, oh, I feel stuck or I feel ungrounded and low level because you're not, you're not moving, you're not connecting, you're not rooting yourself in. And I relate to that because I'm such a, I'm an air, air, fire sign. So I have to ground myself. And um, yeah, I definitely feel that we, I like how you said that we are um, not on the planet, but like a part of it because it's a frequency. And so a lot of the theory I've been hearing in which I kind of intuitively feel connected to is that as we make this shift, it's going to be like a little bit of a split. It's like, okay, well, what frequency do you want to vibrate at? Are we going to go with fear and destruction and like the victim game and blame everyone else and not take responsibility for ourselves? Or are we going to do the best we can and step into that role and help each other build a better community and like kind of vibrate in the whole space of you know love respect trust I can hold space for you you hold space for me we're not going to what do they call that word bypass you know anything that you may be feeling because you might be feeling some heavy emotions and detoxing and like there you have every right to have a feeling whether it's you know heavy and dark it's like okay let's get through this so we can get past this you know and yeah so I definitely feel there's uh, like I don't know how we got kind of like towards that but it does it is related in my opinion because in order to have that world we talk about there's a strong level of leadership within self that needs to occur first and then we can kind of bridge both worlds to like a better like I would love ideally for all of earth to come and just go Let's go up here, guys. But, you know, that's what they talk about. It's it's a choice and it's internal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, do you see yourself as having like a superpower? <laughs> and if so, like, what would it be if you don't mind sharing it? Oh, a superpower? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Probably what I already do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I feel like... Yes, actually, because I work with the pendulum healing. And so a lot of what I do is work, I work with intention. And I do believe that we can heal ourselves even through our minds. And so and I don't I do believe a lot of shamanic practices believe in that too. Like, it's like a shift internally, um, or like kind of dialing into that frequency internally. I do feel like if I were to ever if I were to have a true superpower, it would definitely be just like the power to like, to, um, make magic happen through intention which is kind of already what I do so I don't know if anyone else sees me in a different light but that's kind of where I personally already currently feel connected to so that's kind of where I go well, you know it, it doesn't matter if anybody else sees you in that in that light or not if you <laughs> see you in that light that's oh, that's amazing and I love that what a great superpower and <laughs> <laughs> I ask you that because I feel like as we you know, as we have these stories of the goddess happening, like, you know, the goddess archetypes, obviously, you know, they all are archetypes of certain energy. So I think it's interesting if we sort of look at ourselves and say, okay, well, you know, if, if I had a superpower, what would it be? You know, and, and looking at like, what are our strengths? Like our really super duper strengths, you know I mean? Like you have food and then you have super food. So like, I have me, like, what's super me? You know, you have you, what's super Danielle? So it's... Maybe it's better, yeah, no, I like that. So maybe a better way to say this would be um, that I would have the ability to help people shift, you know, and which is what a lot of energy workers do, right? I mean, that's what I feel. But in a way that's um, a little bit more... Um, 
like precise and gosh, I'm having a hard time explaining what I'm trying to say. Um, I feel like my superpower would just be like 10 X, you know what I mean? It would just be extreme, but in a way that doesn't push somebody, but helps bring out like a certain like strength that, cause I'm assuming that if someone's connected to me, they're already kind of like resonating with my energy so I can help influence in a positive way like to bridge them to the other side. That's the way I see it, you know, cause I know spiritually I do a lot of um, work behind the scenes in my dream state, but I do feel like that would pretty much be my superpower. That's a really awesome superpower. <laughs> yeah, so I mean the ability to help people, not that you heal them or not that you shift them, but you help them to put themselves on the path and do that for themselves. That's, that's, yeah. Awesome. Yes, I like that. That's because obviously everyone has to do the work themselves. Yeah. And I would never impose something if anyone's not ready for the information. They're going to be there ready to receive it. I'm not going to be like, you got to do this. I'm like, okay, <laughs> not for you. <laughs> the reason I asked the, that question of you is because I feel like, you know, if we're asking that of ourselves, and I think it's a great question for mm -hmm. everybody to ask themselves, but if we're asking, if I'm asking you that right now, you know, I feel like, knowing that sort of helps me understand and maybe helps our listeners understand, you know, how we might expect your chapter in the book to be and, and what energy may be sort of coming through that chapter. Um, so I already couldn't wait to read your chapter now. I really can't wait to read your chapter because I feel like it's going to be infused with that, you know? Um, yeah. it's, it's That's so really creative. Cool. I love how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it'll 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 just yeah I mean this is gonna it's gonna ten x your chapter for me so I'm excited for that and so I would also like to know from you Danielle because <clears throat> obviously you know we have we've been working all of us women on this book as a as a collective which I think is so perfect in its timing right now because you know we really have come. I think from my point of view, we have really come um, as a planet more into doing work as a collective and we are um, shifting as a human collective. And so the fact that we've worked on this book in a collective way has been so empowering and so beautiful and so spot on timely, I think, just very on point for the mm -hmm. times. And I know, um, you know, I know a bit about Rada Publishing House, but I feel like you have a much better insight than I and, and maybe some of the other women in this book. So I would love to know from you, like, how has it been, like, what has been like your favorite aspect of working with Rada Publishing House? Well, Rada Publishing House has been a complete, like, blessing that just dropped in from the universe for me personally. Um, I originally started with a different project and it kind of just naturally unfolded as the time went on. And I felt like that led me to not only trust myself, trust the process and trust, you know, working with Rada Publishing House. And I've been able to see over a period of time, the consistency in whom they are and what they're about. And everything that you read in the bio that Rada Publishing describes themselves to be is truly that plus more. Um, because there's so much genuine sincerity behind the intention and how they're able to really just support you through that process and hold space. It's pretty incredible. I mean, there's so many people that work with Rada Publishing House um, that I don't, you know, I don't know what their experience has been like, but I do know that when you really dive in and give it your all, I mean, they're going to come back with you with the same energy. So what you get from this experience is what you're putting in is the way I see it. So if you're say in a book, that's a collaborative book and you know, the press releases are coming out, the videos and all this and the support that they offer, if you don't step into that role, you're not gonna get much back. You may not hit number one, la la la. And then at the end of the day, whose fault is that? And what I'm realizing is the more you give, the more you're gonna get in respect. And so what I mean by that is, you know, you'll get seen on platforms, invited for interviews, hit number one, 
everything is so possible. There's no limit. And so the only thing that's stopping you is yourself is what I'm noticing. So those who really run with it are having so much success with run a publishing house. Um, and they're there for you the, for the process because you are the visionary, the, you know, um, the creative, the artist, you know, maybe some people see themselves as an underdog. I don't know, but at the end of the day, whoever you are, even if you were one of the most successful people ever on the planet and you're like, I want to be published by them. They're going to give you the same exact support because they're just genuinely such a supportive, amazing team. And so I feel that working with Rada Publishing House gives you a unique experience of being able to be so much a part of the process in a way that is empowering. They're not just like, we're going to do it all for you. And then whatever happens, happens. It's like, no, we're going to help you and be there side by side. And we're not going to take anything away from you. We're going to only support and encourage you as much as you're willing to go. And if you hit number one, they're going to be putting all that attention on you. So it's pretty, it's pretty amazing to see like the, all of what they say in their bio is pretty much what they're delivering. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that, that what they put in their bio is what they're delivering because that's really been my experience too. And yeah. that's, you know, you just never know um, what you're getting into, but I, I, I will share with you um, that, I mean, I have two books that I wrote and self-published and self-publishing I mean I had a great time don't get me wrong I love the process it was so much fun however <laughs> working in this arena where it has been a collaborative effort and where I do have a publishing house behind me has been so much easier yeah, you, yeah. Know, because I, you know I don't know all the things they know I don't have all the context they have and so it's just been so, so nice. It's just made everything so much smoother and easier. So yeah, that's yeah, been fun. I agree. <laughs> so, well, thank you for sharing that. And I know you you do have a little more insight because you work a little more closely with them than I do because you have some other roles. But um, so I just would love to know, Danielle, like what nifty, fun, exciting projects do you have up your sleeve? Do you have anything going on that you want to share with us? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I feel like ever since I started working with Rada Publishing House, the creativity lights just went on. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of beautiful personal growth, but also support. And that's the nice thing. We're able to connect with so many like-minded people. Um, so currently we are obviously releasing the stories of the goddess, divine frequency keepers. Um, just recently, we also released Infinite Cosmic Records, which I share a testimonial experience on what it was like working with Maya the Shaman through her Infinite Cosmic Records, Doorways to Sacred Healing and Remembering. I really liked her uh, session. I felt it to be very transform, like transformative for me. And I spent many years uh, watching videos and reading about quantum healing hypnosis, past life regression. So it deeply resonated with me. Um, so I have every intention to study uh, with her, most likely towards the end of the year, to be a certified practitioner through Infinite Cosmic Records. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so that's going to be huge when I do launch, because I plan on um, maybe sharing with the world through my um, uh, conversations from the heart on YouTube. And of course, I've been working with that, which is where I just uh, interview all types of people, healers, authors, you know, visionaries, um, creative types, people who are looking to get their information out there. And all I say is take what resonates because the interviews are there to help bring you kind of like a, like my goal is to bridge people and help bring them the information that they need at the time that they see it. Hey, if it works great, if not go to the next video, <laughs> you know, I'm not offended. Um, and so I've been working on that. And of course I, um, in a personal transition, I'll be moving in the following year, still um, kind of percolating. And I definitely am looking to just remain open to other possibilities and opportunities and just kind of continue to work on my um, healing journey with my pendulum healing and just sharing also with Brown and Publishing House. So kind of got a multiple things going on. You have like every finger in a pie. I do. <laughs> but I love it. It's fun. I you know, I do it all from the heart. I never really like it's yeah, it it it's an, a pleasure pleasurable experience for me. It's not anything that I don't feel 
it's a waste of time or you know where I'm questioning my life so I'm very happy <laughs> well I'm, I'm kind of thinking if there's anybody out there who has been waiting on the muses to strike they might not be having them strike because they're all striking you right now <laughs> 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 so, awesome Danielle thank you so much and so could you just give us um uh, I don't know some place um if you want to just give us a shout out of some place to find you I'll post obviously but if you want to just give us a shout out of where we can find you or your yeah. videos. Thank you. So I don't have my own website just yet, but you can find me on YouTube, Conversations from the Heart. And I do have an Etsy account that I don't always promote, but um, it's similar, Aphrodite Heart Vibes, and also um, Instagram, Aphrodite.Heart.Vibes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danielle. And thank you so very much for taking the time to sit down with me today. And I feel like I've gotten to know you somewhat through this project, but today I feel like I've just gotten to know you even better. And that has been such a delight um, from beginning to end. And today has just been sort of a cherry on top. So thank you for that. And I really can't wait to share this wonderful book, Stories of the Goddess, Divine Feminine Frequency Keepers with everybody. And yes, like Danielle said, the pre-release is March 23rd. And definitely as soon as we get some links, they will be popping up here. So please, you know, if you're hearing this ahead of time, come back and, and look for the links because you really don't want to miss this book. It is just going to be divine no pun intended, but it really is going to be divine. So thank you so much, Danielle. And thank you everyone for watching. And we look forward to journeying further along the path with you, Danielle, and with all of you in the audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. Blessings.